But I believe that there is a word from the Lord for this house and something that the Lord wants to get across to his people today. And I want to begin this morning by informing some and reminding others that God has got plans for you. I need you to look over and let somebody know that you are not here by happenstance or coincidence. You are not here uh, just because somebody invited you, but you are here because God has a plan for you. For your life. I'm not trying to say something churchy because it's Sunday morning, but I come boldly this morning. I come with great confidence and great persuasion because I overheard a conversation that God had with a young prophet by the name of Jeremiah. And God spoke to the people of God through the prophet of God and said, let them know I've got plans for them. He said, I've got plans for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future now this is a verse that we have heard we've seen it on coffee mugs we've seen it on bookmarkers t-shirts plaques this is a very familiar passage of scripture but the thing that makes this particular verse so powerful is not just what God says but when God says it Uh, How many know that God knows how to send you a word right when you need it? That he knows how to say what you didn't even know you needed to hear. And in this particular scripture, he says to a group of people who are in exile, you got to understand their native land has been invaded by enemies. Their homes have been destroyed and set on fire. They have lost all of their belongings. Lives have been lost loss and then for those who did survive the siege they were taken by force into foreign territory they were separated by their from their own country separated from their families and they are in a place that it feels as if their whole life is falling apart they are pressed on every side oppressed and depressed suppressed and it's bad y'all they're disgusting Courage, they are disoriented, but right there, tell somebody right there, right at the end of their rope, God comes and taps Jeremiah on the shoulder and said, tell them I've got plans for them. Listen, you may be in a place where you are at the end of your rope, where you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, where you don't know where your next meal is coming from. You may not know how your job situation is going to work out. You may not know how things are going to work out with your son or with your daughter but I need somebody in here today to understand no matter how dark it may appear to be God's got plans for you Now, one thing about it, he did not tell Jeremiah what those plans were. The scripture does not say, you know the plans that I have for you. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. And he just wants you to know right now, he's got a plan. And the plan is a good plan. It's a plan to prosper you. It's not a plan to harm you. But it is a plan to give you hope and to give you a future This lets me know that my current situation is not my future destination. That how it is right now is not how it's always going to be. Meaning that the place that you are in right now is not a period in your life. That the place you are in right now is just a comma in your life. And it might look dark, it might look bleak, you may feel lonely and be crying yourself to sleep. But this is not a period, it's just a comma. And on the other side of the comma, God's got plans for you. I dare you just to look over at somebody and say, catch me on the other side of the comma. Yeah, you got to understand, you are just in a comma in the book of your life. And God is getting ready to do something on the other side of
of that comma. Pastor, people may be looking at you crazy right now, but just tell them, catch me after the comma. Mama, somebody may be looking at you crazy right now, but just tell them, catch me after the comma. Daddy, somebody might be looking at you funny and sizing you up wrong, but just tell them, catch me on the other side of the comma. Oh yes, we all face situations in our life that have us discouraged sometimes and wringing our hands. But you've got to understand this is not the end, but this is the beginning of one of the best seasons of your life. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. I know what I've got in store for you. I know what's over the hill and around the corner. And it's good if you could just trust me right here I know what I've got in store for you I want to talk to just a few people this morning who may feel that you are experiencing your own place of metaphorical exile that it may not be a literal place but maybe you're experiencing your own metaphorical exile that there were people in this text who did not survive the siege there There were people who simply did not make it through. And then there were those who did. Just look over at your neighbor. Say, I thank God I'm one of the ones who did. But even for the ones who did survive the siege, they found themselves in foreign territory. They found themselves in a place that was uncomfortable and unpredictable. They found themselves in a place that they didn't know uh, what to stand on or who they could trust or what tomorrow was going to hold. And so they are in a place where they are grateful that they survived survived but yet they're in a place where they're saying but God I know you didn't keep me here just for this Uh, I just wonder if there's anybody in here this morning who say I am grateful for everything that God has done concerning my life but yet I'm in a place where I'm saying Lord I'm grateful but I know there's gotta be more Lord I'm grateful but I know this is not all that you've got from me that you're in a place you're grateful that you have overcome what other people have succumbed to you are grateful that you have made it through what others didn't survive but you're just saying if we can just keep it real that if I just fully keep it straight 100 God I'm grateful but I'm frustrated all at the same time who am I talking to up here in this morning who knows what it is to be grateful but frustrated all at the same time. I'm I'm grateful for where I am but there's something deep down on the inside of me that tells me there's got to be more. There's a longing on the inside of me and what I begin to understand is that that longing is God pushing me letting me know you think you've seen something but I've still got something more in store for you. You think you've seen it, but eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has got prepared for those who love him. I dare you to look at somebody and say, God's got a prepared blessing for me. Oh, so every now and then God has got to disturb your comfort uh, because we will get in a place that if we are not careful, we will settle in what we were only designed to walk through. Oh, there's a word for somebody. Tell them, don't you settle in what God has called you to pass through. And so God said, I will send some divine agitation. I'll allow you to experience a holy frustration 
frustration. And that will be an indicator that where you are in life is not where you are always going to be. He said, I'm going to mess with you a little bit so I can get a want to in your spirit that I'm not going to just give you what your heart desires, but I'm going to tell your heart what to desire. That some of the stuff you want, God said you want it because I put a want to in you. And I can't just get stuff to you without me first doing something through you. That God said I can't just get it to you by wanting it for you, but I got to get a want to in you. So God begins to help us cultivate a desire. And I just came to let somebody know this morning, stop playing with the promises of God. Stop praying, playing with the blessings of God and acting like you don't want it. That's a false humility. Uh, You do want what God has for you. I just wonder if I got about five people who would go on and admit this morning that I want everything God has for me. Because truth is, there are some people who don't want it. There are some people who are all right being stuck. There are some people who are okay settling, come what may. But God is dealing with some of you and putting a desire on the inside of you to say, I'm putting a want to in you for what I want to do through you. Uh, that Hannah wanted a baby because God needed a Samuel. That Abraham wanted a son but God needed an Isaac and so sometimes you're in a place that you are wanting what seems to be absolutely impossible and you're questioning yourself to say am I just being selfish do I just want this for me and God sent a girl from Mississippi to let you know no that's not just you that's me putting a desire on the inside of you and you think God's giving you what you want because you want it but God said I'm giving you what you want because I need what you want Oh, somebody's going to get free in here this morning I just wish I could get 25 people to say I want it and let me tell you something there may be a few people who don't want it and that's okay but we need you to be okay when we say I want everything that God said belongs to me God said I've got plans for you and my plans are good they are to prosper you and to give you a hope and a future got to understand that some of God's plans are God's preferences and what he wants to do he's willing to do what he wants to do he is committed to doing in your life and if it's what he wants for you here's the deal he won't force it on you that some of the imagery that is used throughout the Bible is imagery of shepherding, uh, that God will show you how he leads us by shepherding us, that uh, shepherds lead, they don't force. And so God said, there are some things that I want for you, but I will not force you into. He said, I want to take you to another level, but I can't force you there. I, I want to take your mind to another level, but I can't force you there. I want to take your heart and your relationships to another level, but I won't force you there. I, I want to take your whole life to another level, but I cannot force you there. And God God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son for your salvation but even then he did not force you there he is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance but he did not force that on you and so he's here's the deal he said I'm God enough that I want to take you to the next level but I respect your free will enough to allow you to settle on uh, to live on whatever level you settle for I'm going to say it again, that God wants to take you to another dimension, another place in him. And so he said, I'm God enough that I want more for 
for you, yet I will allow you to live on whatever level you settle for. I just wonder if I could get 20 people in here this morning who have made up in your mind settling season is over. I just wonder if I could get a few folk who say I made up in my mind. I'm not settling anymore. I'm not settling for less than God has for me. I'm not settling for the leftovers. I'm not settling to be the last in. I'm not settling anymore. I want everything God said belongs to me but you got to understand that some of his plans require your participation that his plans require our faith that our willingness to participate is an expression of our faith in his ability to do what he said he was going to do but you got to understand faith is not optimism uh, it produces optimism but optimism by itself is not faith because you can be optimistic and not have faith in God Oh, yeah, you got to understand that, that faith is not optimism, neither is faith positive thinking. Uh, faith affects our thinking, but you can have positive thoughts and still not have those thoughts governed by your faith in God. Uh, I'm going to lose some people right here, but faith is not even manifestation. It, it will produce manifestations, but just because you got a manifestation don't mean it was a faith manifestation manifestation but the Bible lets us know that faith without a corresponding action is dead faith without works is dead the Bible lets us know faith is the substance of the things that I'm hoping for but I have not yet seen the Bible said without faith it is impossible to please God for those that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in other words God said don't come to me unless you believe that I am God don't come to me unless you believe that I can do what I said I can do. <laughs> Pastor Tony Evans said faith is acting like God is telling the truth. And, and this is how sometimes people look at you. They look at your life and they look at the things that you've gone through. And they say, uh, if I were in your shoes, I would be discombobulated. If I were in your shoes, I would have already walked away. How is it that you continue to stand in faith and trust God and believe God and bless God? Uh, how do you stay so calm in your crisis? And they're trying to figure out out. how is it that you're not stressed out how is it that you are not falling apart and you're sitting over here cool calm and collected just waiting on God to do what God does they don't understand baby I'm just sitting here acting like God is telling the truth because I know that he is and I know that if he said it it is surely going to come to pass that the reason I praise God in my pain is because I'm acting like I know God is telling the truth. The reason that I can still bless God when I've lost everything I had is because I'm acting like I already am fully persuaded that I know God is telling the truth. And here is the truth. I can praise because no weapon that is formed against me shall ever be able to prosper. He didn't say that the weapons weren't going to form. He didn't say that people weren't going to talk. He didn't say that there weren't going to be plots and schemes to bring you down and to test your faith. But he said, though the weapon will form, it will not be able to prosper. Here's the truth. Every tongue that rises against you shall he condemn. Here's the truth. Your enemy can come at you one way, but oh boy, going to have to flee seven ways. Here's the truth. God will do exceedingly, abundantly, abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Here's the truth, you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves you. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. 
One of the most powerful examples of this is in the story of Noah. And I'm not going to get into all of the deep theological wrestlings of this particular passage. I'm not going to talk about uh, the whole redemptive nature of it. But there are some simple things that we can glean from this text this morning that uh, we are in a place where God is saying, look, this thing is not going uh, like I had planned for it to go. That God is looking at the human species and saying they are not operating in a way that is consistent with my original intent. And so he looks for a man named Noah and said we're going to have to start over because sometimes renovation requires demolition. Okay, y'all don't want to talk about that. That 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 sometimes we gotta tear it down to get it right. Uh, we don't want to talk about the fact that if God started afresh, then why can't we? Uh, why you want to tell me that it's too far gone and I'm too old for this and I done been down that road and I tried this and that didn't? If God can start again, you can start again. God sees this man by the name of Noah. And the Bible said Noah found favor with God. And that favor expressed itself through God sharing with Noah some insider information. God tells Noah, I know that you've never seen what I'm talking about. You've never heard it. You've never smelled it. But Noah, it's going to rain. And then God begins to share with Noah uh, that this is what you're going to have to do in order to survive. That God told him it was going to rain. He told him what to build and he told him how to build it and what he needed to build it with. And God told him how to build something that was going to protect him and his family in the midst of the rain. That God told Noah, build the ark, yet God never picked up one hammer himself. That there are some things that God sees for your life, that there are some plans that God has for your life. And you got to understand, God is the architect. God is the architect, but you, my brother, you, my sister, are the general contractor. And so what the architect does is that the architect designs the building. That the architect shares the plans for what the potential uh, and possibility the building holds. And so the architect is not just sharing plans with you to share them. The success of the building is not just based on the success of the architect, but also upon the blueprint. And the blueprint is dependent upon the builders because the builder has to build according to blueprint. What you're talking about? Well, in the Old Testament, God told Moses, build according to pattern that there's never anything God will ask you to build without first giving you a blueprint giving you a design and I came to let somebody in here know this morning that God is our architect and he has not just put the plan down on paper but he has also placed a plan in your heart that if you are going to experience what you see in your heart you're going to have to get in alignment with God God's will concerning your life that you're going to have to get to building that whatever you see for your life you're willing to build it whatever you, you see for your marriage you got to build it what is it that you see for the future of your children look at your neighbor and say you got to build it what do you see for your business five years down the road you've got to build it what is it that you want for ten years down the road you've got to build it I just wonder if there's anybody in here today who said I'm here because I am in my building season. That God will give you the blueprint but it's up to you to do the building. The Bible said except God build the house those that labor to build it build in vain. Is there anybody in here who's ready to partner with God in this next season of your life?
life. Is there anybody willing to say, you're talking to me, I'm building something. I know God's got plans for me. Uh, as far as we know, when we look at this particular passage of scripture, Noah has no previous construction experience. He doesn't know that there is a builder inside of him. As far as we know, God is placing a demand on him for something he has never done before. And I just sense that maybe, maybe it's not everybody in here today, but maybe there's a few of you who are in a place in your life where you are sensing that God is placing a demand on a part of you that you didn't even know existed. That, that you, you hear God speaking to you and you feel God drawing you in a different kind of way and you are finding yourself knowing things you have not read, knowing things you have not studied. You've got an interest in things that have never interested you before and so you know that God is up to something and you don't even know how you're thinking like you're thinking but you got to remember there was an Abraham inside of Abram. There was an Israel inside of Jacob there was a Sarah inside of Sarai and there is some stuff in you that you have not even discovered yet there is a wiser you in you there is a stronger you in you there is a more persevering you in you a more loving you in you a more trusting you in you Noah is in a place that he has no prior construction experience. And in verse 14 of chapter 6 in Genesis, God says to Noah, you shall build an ark for yourself. It's, it's that for yourself part for me. Uh, you shall build an ark for yourself. That's, that's God saying, I can't do this part for you. Uh, that I want it for you, but I can't do it for you. And, and one way the enemy shows up in the process of building is in distractions. That, that there are some of you who want to build, some of you who are able to build, but you've been dealing with too many distractions to really fully follow what God has put in your heart. But I need you to look over at somebody and say, it's building season. I may be the odd woman out, I may be the odd man out, but it's building season. And I'm going to build if I got to build by myself. And so what God does is that he begins to give you responsibilities that you haven't even had yet. Noah doesn't just show us that we need to build. But he gives us clues concerning what we need to be able to build. And so there's a couple of things that you need in order to build whatever it is that God is building. Whether God is building your family, whether God is building your marriage, whether God is building your church, whether God is building your business, whether God is building your finance. There are some tools that you're going to need if you're going to build. Can I give these to you real quick and then I'm going to move and get out your way. The first thing is you got to build on truth. That if you don't have truth, you can't build anything. That if you don't have truth, everything you try to do is going to be built on sinking sand. Truth is reality. And John Mark Comer said truth is what you run into when you find out you were wrong. Oh my. That, that you thought something was one particular way until you ran into truth. Only to run into it and find that you had been wrong. The Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So if knowing the truth makes you free. The opposite must also be true. That when I am living life and it's not according to truth. I find myself in a bound 
place. I find myself in a limited place. And so the first thing God gave Noah was truth. What did he tell him? God told Noah, Noah is going to rain. Uh, Noah had never seen rain. He may not like the fact that God said it's going to rain. There may not have been a cloud in the sky. But God told Noah, Noah, it's going to rain. So I need you to build something now that will enable your family to float in a flood. Can I tell you something? That's not just God's word to Noah, but that is God's word to growth point. That is God's word to me that it is going to rain. What does rain represent? Well, in some instances, rain represents burdens, but there are are other instances where rain represents blessings Noah needed the truth because a lot of times things will begin a certain way and everything is looking good and everybody's just so loving uh, but at some point I gotta let you know it's gonna rain uh, everybody said uh, God gave you a great idea for a business and you met and you got your business plan down on paper and you're blowing and you're going but it's some point I gotta let you know it's going to rain and I know that you are anointed and appointed I know you're the sage of the age you got all the answers that everybody else has been waiting for but friend let me tell you at some point it's gotta rain and my question to you is the same question new edition asked us about 25 years ago the question is can you stand the rain storms will come um, this we know for sure but I got a question can you stand the rain I know y'all like each other and you all booed up now but can you stand the rain I know you're on top of the world right now but I want to let you know if you lose your job can you stand the rain if your children make decisions that disrupt your family I want to know can you stand the the rain when you believe it's gonna rain you will build an ark and you want to build it so strong that when the flood does come and when other people drown you're still floating because let me tell you, baby, there's been some points and times in my life that I never in my wildest dreams could have imagined. There have been some things that came my way that if you had told me they were coming, I would have told you there's no way I can stand. There's no way I could go through that and come out in my right mind. But I want to let you know if you're building on a solid foundation, let the raindrops fall down. Let the wind begin to blow. Let the thunder begin to clap its hand. Let the lightning begin to flash. And you'll come out better than you went in if you can stand the rain. Oh, when you hear a word from God, you will begin to build according to the word and you want to build it strong and that's why he said you got to have some truth so that when other people are drowning you still got your head above the water not only do you need truth but you need some tools look at your neighbor say for the next season you're in you're gonna need some tools and see, you don't need the same tools for every season. Every season has a work to do in your life. Spring has a work to do in your heart. Summer has a work to do in your heart. Fall has a work to do in your heart. Winter has a work. Every season has a work to do. But you need different tools for different seasons. Look at your, your neighbor and say, you got to have some tools. Some of you need some tools. You are in sawing season. That, that a saw is for the things you need to cut off. 
And I can't speak for anybody else, but this is just a season where because where God is taking us, I'm cutting off ne negativity. I'm cutting off toxicity. I'm cutting off cynicism. I'm cutting off people who don't believe God. I'm cutting off people who persecute me because I do. I have gotten to the place I'm not beside myself. I don't think I'm better than anybody else. I'm not acting funny, but at this point in my life there's just some things that I gotta cut because if I don't cut it it won't get cut I just wonder do I have some company up in here today that you're just in a place that you gotta cut whatever needs to be cut because if you don't cut it it won't get cut some of you, some of you say, well, pastor, I'm not really in that season where I'm having to cut anything off. Well, maybe what you need in this season is a hammer. You say, well, what do you do with a hammer? Well, a hammer is to apply pressure. Uh, that, that, that when you get a hammer, uh, you will drive a nail from one thing into another thing in order to hold two things together. The Lord sent me here to tell you this morning that there are some things that will come to Together, if you will apply enough pressure and yeah I know they already don't like you I know they already talking about you but just look at somebody and tell them if you don't like me now you really fitting to not like me because I haven't even started applying pressure yet Look at your neighbor, tell him, don't get too thrown off because I'm about to apply some pressure. Okay, I can see there's a few of y'all I still haven't reached yet. Yeah. So you're saying, I don't need a saw. I don't need a hammer. Well, maybe what you need in this season is a level. Because maybe you've been living your life out of balance. That, that you're in a season where it has been all withdrawals and no deposits. And you're in a place where you say, Pastor, I'm in a season where I'm almost bankrupt. Because uh, everybody's pulling but nobody is pouring back in. Let me let you know, it's not unfair and it is not unselfish when you come to the season and the realization that you say, this is my time to level up. Because I'm not good for God or anybody else if I stay in a place where it's all withdrawals and no deposits. Okay, there's still a couple more. I hadn't touched anything. Maybe you're in painting season. Because paint will cause the same old thing to look like a new thing. Uh, that maybe you are in a place where it's not that God needs to give you something to do something new. You just need God to do something new with what you've already got. Okay, okay. Uh, let, me, let me just see who's in a building season. Okay, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We got about fifteen people in here who who say I'm in a building season. So you gotta have truth, you gotta have some tools. Number three, you need a team. We live in a place in this day and time where we live in two extremes. We are either codependent or we are hyper independent. That, that, that you gotta be careful. I know the song is cute and everything, but you're walking around talking about all I need is King Jesus. Long, long, long as I got him. Don't need nobody else. It's a good song. The beat is good. I like Vicky Winans, but it's not scriptural. Because biblically, we are encouraged toward interdependence. That God is the only one who has all things within himself. Uh, the Apostle Paul describes it like body parts. He said, we are one body, but we have many parts. That each part is performing its function, but it works together uh, in purpose for the whole. That, that we are working in interdependently one with the other. That one is an eye, one is an ear. And God was intentional about not giving anyone 
everything. So Paul warned us against hyper individualism in Corinth. I know, I know we got loners and they say, oh, I'm good. I got friends. Uh, but just because you got friends don't mean you got a team. Having friends mean you got company. But in this season, you don't just need company. You need a team. You need some like-minded people who can build with you. You need some people who say, I'm going to help you get what you don't have. I'm going to work together with you so we can build something great for the masses. You need a team. Not only do you need truth, not only do you need tools, not only do you need a team, but you need timing. When Noah completed the ark, when he finished, the rain did come. God knew how long the construction process would take. And so uh, he had to get it in his heart and get him to where he was building before the rain would come. And some of you are in a place where maybe you're saying, I don't know when it's going to rain. You might not know, but God knows. And so he's telling you to start building because he knows at some point the heavens are going to open and the rain is going to come. You got to understand uh, what it looks like even back in 2 Kings where God looked at them in a place and he said make this valley full of ditches. They were in a place where they didn't even have water but he said I want you to go and dig ditches and he said you got to understand you're not going to see any rain clouds in the sky. You're not going to see any raindrops. The wind is not going to be blowing there's not going to be anything around you that's giving you an indication that anything is changing. There's not going to be anything around you that's giving you an indication that anything is going to be different. But he said, dig the ditches anyway. Because he said, you're not going to see the rain. You're not going to hear the thunder. Yet these valleys will be filled with water so that you and your cattle and your family can eat what you're saying pastor I'm saying it's not going to look like what you think it ought to look like and you cannot be measuring the progress of what God is doing and where God is taking you by what you see out here you got to go by what you see in here and God said when nothing out there lines up with what you see in here keep going with what I told you in here because though you don't see the wind though you don't see the rain though you don't hear the thunder or see the lightning water is getting ready to fill your ditches Noah had never even seen rain before but look at your neighbor and say it's gonna happen anyway Oh yeah, tell them it's going to happen anyway. If God has said it, though the grass may wither and the flower may fade, the word of God shall endure forever. So let me tell you something. Anybody can bless God when everything is going your way. Anybody can bless God when you got a check in the mail and uh, clothes in your closet and shoes on your feet and a nice car. But I want to ask you, can you bless God in the meantime? Can you bless him between the promise and the fulfillment of the promise? Can you bless him in the meantime when nothing seems to be happening, when nothing seems to be moving, when you are in the wilderness as it were, so to speak? Can you bless him in the meantime I want to ask you this morning what is God tapping you on your shoulder and speaking to your heart about what is it that God is nudging you about because whatever God is talking to you about your future requires it you need tools you need truth you need timing, you need a team, but you also need tenacity. Tenacity speaks to the, will the, the willingness to keep building when there are no clouds in the sky. And I'm just going to tell you something this morning. There have been many times in my life, many times in the life of our ministry, 
where we've been grateful but frustrated. Where you're in a place that, that, that you feel bad for being frustrated because of how good God has been. But if you're really real about it, as grateful as you are, you're still frustrated because you know you've not really reached the full apex of what it is God would have concerning your life. Know what it is to be grateful but frustrated. Know what it is to walk in a place where my income didn't match my output. Know what it is to walk in a place where the harvest we reaped didn't seem to match the seeds that we've sown. And I came to talk to those people here today and I know that it's hard when you're in a place you're trying to stay filled with faith, you're trying to be enthusiastic, you're trying to remain optimistic. But sometimes the cares of life will steal that away. Many of you, you're still standing, but it has not been easy. You're still standing, but you're still saying, God, I've got more questions than it feels like I've got answers. And you're, there's a wrestling that is taking place in your soul where you're saying, God, I know there has to be more. I came to let you know, ladies. I came to let you know, Growth Point. I came to let you know, Pastor Radford, that God sent me all the way from Jackson, Mississippi to tell you keep building anyway because your why matters. What God has you doing matters. You got to have the tenacity of a Jacob who said, God, I won't let go until you bless me. I came to let you know the rain is going to come. And I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand. I don't know exactly when it's coming, but I know that God is faithful. I don't know exactly how it's coming or exactly who is going to come through, but I know that God is going to make good on his word. David said, never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor have I seen his seed begging for bread. I came to let you know, Growth Point, it's going to rain. And God has plans for you. His plans for you are good. It is to prosper you. Not to do you harm, but to give you hope and to give you a future. I want to let you know that the Lord has let me know for this church, this shall be a season of great restoration. That not only are you going to see a restoration of things, but God is going to restore your soul. God is going to restore some of your minds. And God is going to move in such a way that the favor of the Lord will be seen upon this place that the favor of the Lord will be evident upon these pastors and upon this body of believers and so I want you to stand to your feet this morning and just allow me that you got to come to a place that you take the promise of God and you so hold on to, you so cling to the promise of God that you say, I'm not going to let anything persuade me differently. The Bible said no good thing will he withhold from those who love him and walk uprightly before him. He made a promise that said all things will work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He didn't say say everything was going to look good. He didn't say everything was going to feel good. He didn't say everything was going to look good, but he said, I'm going to take it and work it for good. You got to understand he made a promise that said, I will supply all of your needs, not according to your riches, not according to their riches, but he said, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory. That is a promise. He said weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that many of you are in the place in between what God spoke and
and seeing the fulfillment of the thing that he promised and you got to be able to love him in the meantime you got to be able to love him when you got more questions than answers you got to be able to love him when you feel like you're overlooked when you feel like you're forgotten when you feel like nobody cares when it looks like you're never gonna see it come to pass keep being faithful keep trusting the word keep holding on to the word because what God has spoken it shall surely come to pass God has plans for you he said I know the plans that I have for you you may not know all the plans but I know the plans that I have for you and the plans I have for you they're good they're to prosper you to take you further to take you deeper to expand the arm of your reach from time to time it may look like things working against you are being able to prosper but God said I got hope for you I've got a future and that future is greater than your eyes have ever known. It's greater than your heart has ever perceived. And so I want to pray for every person in this place today, every person under the sound of my voice. And I want you to look at somebody and just say, neighbor, today is your claiming season. That there is a time to sow, but there is also a time to reap. And God is going to honor your faithfulness. God is not going to leave you out in the cold. God is not going to leave you holding the bag. But God is going to be with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I'll go with you all of the way. Look at your neighbor. Say, you're not forgotten. You're not forsaken. But God's got something good for you. What he's got is good and very good. See, 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 let me tell you, I'm not feeling any bounce back. I don't know if y'all are tired. I don't, I don't know, but it's, it's one of two things. It's one of two things. Either you're tired and you're just letting fatigue get the best of you. Or you're in a place where you're seeing your circumstances bigger than you see your God. Because if you begin to really see him for who he is, if you begin to really see him in the fullness of his power, if you begin to really see him in the full of his majesty, in the fullness of his might, you begin to understand ain't nothing going on around me that God can't do within me. That there's nothing around me that is bigger than the God who reigns above me. And when you begin to really get a glimpse of who God really is, when you begin to get an idea that he really is a God who is integrous he really is the God of his word he really is the miracle worker he really is able to deliver he really is and see the enemy he specializes in partnering with your flesh the enemy specializes in partnering with your carnality to keep you bound and to keep you in a place where it's hard to believe God for what God said he's going to do but if I could just get about 20 people who would tell your flesh to shut up if I could get about 20 people who would tell your flesh to sit down and let your spirit begin to touch the throne of heaven and you would begin to open up your mouth and say father right now I receive everything that you have said concerning my life father right now I stretch my hand to you no other help I know but I'm here postured to receive I've got a posture of faith I've got a posture of pursuit I've got a posture of trust and I am ready to receive what you have for me it's plowing time.